Hello, everybody. Happy Thursday. I apologize in advance. This is going to be a little late. Um, I recorded it this morning and then didn't like it. So I'm re recording my lesson. Um, so I um, am going to talk to you about the battles and sort of like the arc of the war of the battle of the Civil War. Um, I am certain that at some point in your life, you will take an American history class in high school or college, maybe both, where you will have to memorize these things and memorize the battles and the dates and all that stuff, because I did. I have forgotten all of those dates, which is why I'll be looking uh, at the notes that I took as I talk to you. So I'm not going to have you memorize the battles um, for your middle school history lesson. I just want you to kind of understand how the war went and understand mostly what I want you to think about is imagine. Um, after this war and after this number of casualties and the you know sort of horrors that both sides put each other through the idea that then these two countries they weren't separate countries these two groups had to come together and figure out how to heal and be america and sort of redo the the struggles that they put themselves through that's the reconstruction period it's the period after the civil war and i think it's, it's such an interesting part of our nation's history and we'll start learning about it next week Sorry, I'm going to shut my door. Um, and so just imagine, kind of keep that in mind while we talk. And then also um, uh, just keep in mind like the differences between the two, the two groups, the two armies. Oops. Okay. So um, here goes. Uh, we know um, about the start of the Civil War in um, uh, Fort Sum. Sumter um, and the battles that were or the shots that were fired there. The first real battle of the war was on July 21st, 1861. It's the battle of the first battle of Bull Run and the South won that battle. Now, yesterday I talked a little bit. The South was not supposed to win the Civil War. Uh, it was supposed to be a very quick and decisive victory on the part of the North. Um, because the North had more soldiers and they had more goods. They controlled the manufacturing. So nobody thought the South was going to win. Um, and they didn't eventually win, but the war took a lot longer than they were expecting. And they had many more battles and many more victories than anyone thought. So they won the first battle of Bull Run. They also won the second battle of Bull Run. Those were both in 1861. Um, a couple of reasons why the South did as well as they did. They were fighting for their way of life. They truly believed that their way of life would be taken from them if slavery was um, abolished. So that was a big part of it. Also, the North had a series of not so great generals before they ended up with um, Sherman and Grant at the end of the, towards the end of the war. So there was a series of generals that, that Lincoln was not happy with um, that allowed them to lose some pretty key battles. Um, so the Battle of Antietam, 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 I never say that right and want to say Anaheim and that's not it. Um, it was on September 17th, 1862. That was the deadliest battle of the war. 12,000 Union soldiers and 13,000 Confederate soldiers uh, died. The Union was able to hold off the Confederate forces, but um, Lincoln was not out, was not, um, happy with the outcome of the battle because they did not pursue their advantage and pursue the Confederate forces. They just held them off. So while it was a victory, it was not considered a super great victory. Um, and this was part of what led Lincoln to the Emancipation Proclamation. There were more battles in here. I'm just kind of highlighting the big ones. On January 1st, 1863. So September 17th was a really deadly battle. That was a sort of victory. Then the Emancipation Proclamation was signed and enacted, and this got the Union a lot more troops. We know that the Emancipation Proclamation was a military move, um, partially to get more troops. Uh, and then in the spring of 1863, there was the Battle of Chancellorville. The Confederate lost 22% of their army in that um, battle. That's how many men died during that battle, and the Union lost 15%. So these were really, really terrible battles with a lot of death, a lot of loss, um, really hard on both sides. Uh, then in 1860, uh, July 1st, 1863, um, sorry, the North won the Battle of Chan Chancellorville. Did I say that? I meant to say that. Um, the Confederates tried to push through near Gettysburg in Pennsylvania. They were unable to, so things were really starting to turn by this point. Um, Grant, 
helped win the North, uh, helped win the Siege of Vicksburg and the Battle of Chattanooga in 1863 as well, after which Lincoln put Grant in charge, made him the head general of everybody. And this was in March, 1864. Grant assigned Sherman to be in charge of the Western forces and they worked together. Um, Grant used attrition. This is an important historical word to use. A battle of attrition is like when um, a castle has their moat and no one can get in, but another army surrounds them so that no food can get in. So it's a battle of attrition is basically like starving, um, starving the your enemy so that they surrender that's what a battle of attrition is so there was attrition was used during the civil war um to try to defeat the south and um this was in um petersburg this was in virginia so starting in june of 64 uh, grant was using attrition meanwhile so that's like nasty right like forcing people to starve to death to give up it takes a long time it's pretty brutal way to, to, be, to be in a battle. And meanwhile, um, Sherman took Atlanta in, this, in September of 64 in Georgia, and then began a, uh, a famous march to the sea to capture Savannah. And he devastated Georgia on the way. And I'm gonna share some stuff from that for you because I think it's sort of gruesomely fascinating. And because I think it'll help sort of guide our thinking as we think about um, reconstruction. So basically to sort of sum up, the South did well in the beginning. There were really high casualties on both sides. The North had some not so great generals. Lots of losses happened. The North passed the Emancipation Proclamation, which allowed them more soldiers. Grant and Sherman were very good generals. They came in charge and they used attrition and um, total war is what happened in Georgia. And I'm gonna talk about that in a minute. And these two things led to the South having to surrender. And this entire process took about four years um, with some of these really massive battles happening in between. That's kind of the summary of the war if you're gonna think about it in terms of like the overall picture. Um, I will, um, well here, I will show you my, share my screen and show you some of the images and words about the march to the sea. I remember being fascinated with it when I was, oops, nope, that's for current events, as is that. Do, 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 do. It's right here, sorry. Um, Sherman's march is coming up. Okay, so here are just some quotes from Sherman, make Georgia howl. Um, they wanted, he said that he was going to smash things to the sea. He was gonna smash his way through through Georgia until he got to the sea. So going from um, Atlanta, Georgia to Savannah, Georgia, he had 60,000 troops with him. Um, here are some, uh, some descriptions of what happened. So to that end, Sherman's troops marched south towards Savannah in two wings about 30 miles apart. Um, they, uh, I'm skipping some stuff here. They fled, they wrecked bridges, chopped down trees and burned barns filled with provisions. Sorry, that's what the South did. So that they burned, the South burned their own barns before the North got there so that the North couldn't burn their barns. That is part of what happened, um, certainly. But that was not, they were not always able to do that. Um, they raided farms and plantations. They stole and slaughtered chickens, cows, turkeys, sheep, and hogs. They stole, they stole food as much as they could carry. Um, and one soldier wrote a letter home. It ain't so sweet to succeed. One soldier wrote in a letter home as they thought it would be until finally they reached Savannah. So along the way, that was a really just a brutal, terrible um, path. As I said, it was called total war. It was brutal and destructive but it did just what it was supposed to do. It hurt Southern morale and made it possible for the Confederates to fight at full capacity and likely hastened the end of the war. So um, it was kind of a last stop effort to end the war. Um, certainly the morality of that could be debated uh, often. Uh, so we won't necessarily talk about the morality right now. We'll just kind of say that it, it happened. Um, this led um, to the surrender of the South on um, April 9th, 1865, 
Lee surrendered at the Appomattox courthouse um, and surrendered the, the Confederacy and it was dissolved. Um, of course, none of that was instant and there were lots of holdovers and like, a, you know, their own countrymen, people from, people from Georgia looked out their window and saw people from New York coming, burning their farm, slaughtering their cows and killing their chickens, like pretty gruesome, brutal stuff. And also a lot of people lost fathers, brothers, husbands, um, in these really intense battles. So that just kind of, you know, sets the stage for the next section of history that we're going to study, which is reconstruction. Um, okay, I'm going to stop rambling now. I feel like I talked really fast and I said a lot of dates and a lot of names. So I'm going to go again and kind of sum up the overall gist of what I was trying to say, which is that um, the South did better than expected. The North um, had poor leadership in the beginning, but were able to win in the end because of the Emancipation Proclamation and the Black soldiers joining the army. And also they had more manufacturing goods and they had the leadership of Grant and Sherman at the end of the war who used attrition and total war to help um, end the war. That's the, that's the one sentence summary of all that I just said. Uh, I hope you're well, bye.